They based, uh, by 2014, if we didn't have a significant infusion of additional dollars within the community, our backlog would go to about $24 million. And that is without a difficult winter like we just experienced. Now, the winters themselves don't make road systems fail. They just really show you that a road system is failing. Right. Right. So well, the potholes come out. Oh, they, they blossom like flowers yeah. in the spring. Oh yes. But we need a lot more money for the sewage infrastructure, for the sewage water, and also for the roads. And the roads are very visible. You you drive the roads in the community right now. It's uh, the need is immense, and the funding is is woefully insufficient. It seems just some of the roads, like the Converse and the Williams, that carry a lot of truck traffic mm -hmm. through the town. Right. Uh, they they have more needs than the others, the you know, the side roads. They what will wear out quicker. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to agree with you on on that. I uh, probably because there's a lot more. Now the, the warrants that you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I noticed they all deal with the schools. Well, this particular time, right. a lot of them dealt with the schools. Now, yes. Do you see in the future now if they're spending mm -hmm. umpteen million dollars on the high school to redo it? Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a time, five, ten years down in the road, and if you can see that far, we're, we're going to have to spend a lot of money on the other schools? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, systems age, like your road systems. Like we own. do. Yes, like we do. <laughs> These systems age, and, and right now, uh, we, I, don't, I don't see a comprehensive inventory and analysis done on all the resources in the town of Longmeadow. As I've stated to the select board, I. I envision that they really are not aware of how great the needs are of this community. I think we have samplings. We have like asphalt study. We have the Teagan Bond study. But these are just pieces. But it's not been inclusively brought together. And it, it's an arduous exercise, but it's doable. Other corporations, other towns have done it. Other park systems have done it. And you, you basically analyze. You go out and measure everything that you have and you put it on a piece of paper and then you develop a, a standard that you want that resource maintained at. And then you simply say, okay, if it takes this to maintain it and this is my standard, then you'd go out and check the actual condition of it. And between the standard you want and the actual condition reveals how much work you need to perform. Right. And then you annualize it, how much can I do annually, and then what you can't do to keep it up ends up being deferred maintenance and it just goes on in the out years. Right. But Jim, it gives a good a, view. You have a question? How best do you think we can get the message to the community of what these needs are? My personal feeling is, is we need to be doing more evaluation and working up the actual estimates and, and standing in front of forums such as this and saying this is the state of the road system in, in the town of Longmeadow. This is the state of the water and sewage systems in the town of Longmeadow. Uh, I, was at, I was at a town meeting, I, I, I don't remember when it was, not too long ago where there was an engineer, I guess this, the, the town hired this engineer. And I, all I can remember is a comment that he made that the infrastructure of Longmeadow, I mean the water pipes, mm -hmm. et cetera, under the ground, is woefully in need of repair. Absolutely. And he said, if you don't you know, address that, you know, everything's just going to break and you're going to be stuck with a big bill at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, is that part of your looking into the infrastructure under the ground type thing? It really is not part of the committee's task because we're evaluating capital programs. Okay. These tasks fall under the town manager and the director of public works. Mike, to, Mike Rabel. Yes, to go out and do these studies and do the research and build these programs up to then to submit them to the town manager which eventually goes up to the select board. So they see how large this picture really is. This pavement study alone is just one small aspect and their deficit right now is about 24 million or say by 2014. And you're right, the, the community as it developed, way closer to the center of town is the mains down there, very old. The, out in here, I guess most of this area is developed in the 60s, so these are right. relatively new, but the other mains are, are woefully inadequate. In some cases, they're not even large enough to supply enough water for community use because of the, when, they, when they were sized in, it was just a small community. Surely. And, and this takes major, I mean, you have to put cameras down inside of the ground and run it through manholes, and I understand there is some survey work going on at this point. Uh, you have to do a lot of GIS and GPS work. 
to identify every drop inlet in this community and should have a number on it and then you inspect the outfalls to see what the conditions are. You know, we have a major drainage uh, fault this year at Ely, Ely Way and it's five years old and it didn't just happen. And it's through this comprehensive inspection process that you get ahead of this curve. And if you can't get ahead of the curve, at least somebody knows that this is what's going on in this community. So when the select board makes a financial decision, they've got all the facts in front of them. And I feel uncomfortable that they don't have all the facts. My personal feeling is they do not have all the facts in front of them at this point to make some of these critical decisions. Do you feel that maybe they ignore some of the facts? I don't want to... No, I don't think so. I, I felt very comfortable Put with Put down the their own board. priorities as opposed to what... I haven't seen... You'll always get a, a little bit of that. I mean, let's, that's, that's going to happen. I, even myself, I'm partial to certain pieces of infrastructure. Right. And you know, you can already tell. I worry about what's underground because you can't see it. And I know what happens in underground because I've worked in it all my life. So there is partials, partialities that come into them. But we, uh, that's why we have committees, and that's why we have a lot of people that we kind of keep that partialities in line. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. And, and we certainly, everybody on that committee, what are the qualifications? Because you certainly know a lot about things that you kind of lose me. Well, I've been, I've been in facility management all of my life. So I've been in road systems, water, yeah. sewage, uh, infrastructures, and uh, a variety of different public service things. The qualifications that we stated earlier, it would be nice to have some engineering, on the committee, you need some facility management on the committee, and you need somebody just plain management that knows how to manage things. Because if you get too many engineers in a room, sometimes you you nestle down too close to the detail. If you get too many facility managers, sometimes you overlook the engineering aspects, depending on the qualifications of the facility manager. So the the present committee committee is excellent. We have a wonderful so, cross reference. Sounds of people. like it. Somebody yes. like me couldn't be on. Not that I'm applying for it, but you know, uh, I certainly couldn't. Uh, you know, I would just have Kim, to go with looks. No. Now you no. said you have a doctor on the committee. Yes, how does how does he fit into? He he provides an excellent overview. From you figure it, all commute all professions are very similar. Even in the medical profession, they have preventative maintenance and they have major mm -hmm. rehab on bodies and all. I mean, it's a little different, but they still are aware of the terminology and how we progressively move through treatment plans. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't think so much that there's a parallel, but there is unbelievable parallels. Interesting. Yeah, and there's an administrative, there's an overall administrative value that's brought in from the medical profession mm -hmm. that usually facility management doesn't get in. So they, they, it's a very complimentary type fashion. Mm -hmm. Now you said that uh, you're up for reappointment, not re-election, reappointment. Re reappointment. Re by the select board. That's correct. So you have to go before them as all committee members. Yes, must. we do. We have, to, uh, we have to go in for an interview. Now, is, is there any, um, any plans that maybe your position should be elected position? I'm not aware of it. No? No, okay. not aware of any. Okay. Mm. Anything You else? still had to fill out a... a a form to yes. apply like everyone yeah, else does. It's a regular it. application form and, yeah. and go for the interview. And you get the big salary that most of the <laughs> You get the very large do. salary. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> it, it, it's, that's twice what we get. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. How, yeah. long, how long do you feel is your education process? I mean, somebody, I know in my own case on the Finance Committee, it's taken me two, three years to understand really what's going on. How long do you think the education process is on your committee? to? truly understand the needs of the community. Well, we're blessed right now is that we have some people that have been on the committee for a, tour, a couple of tours, and some of the newer people are, are directly from the engineering field, and they're dealing with similar infrastructure problems on the outside as a consultant and also as active engineering firms. So when these members came to the committee, there was immediate startup. When we laid a project out, they immediately knew the questions to be asking and what needed to be done in order for that project to be funded and, and completed properly. Now, if you, if you came into the committee totally, totally unrelated to these disciplines, there would be a startup period of time. But right now, as I say, we're very blessed because we have unbelievable qualifications on our committee right now. It sounds like it. How, how often do you meet? Uh, do you we, have scheduled? Uh, mm -hmm. oh, well, you do. with the new state uh, mandate on meetings, Everything has to be transparent. You yes. have to right. tell everybody 
like putting neon signs outside of city hall, town hall, telling them when you're meeting and so it's, on. It's listed in several areas, right. and we start, usually we get the plan in uh, December, early December, and we usually make a board uh, presentation in late February. So we meet during the middle of the winter, during the inclement period of time, <laughs> which has some, has some uh, problems too, because we can't get out sometimes and view projects on the ground. Now, I, I went on the town website and I printed out, because you can go on the town website and get copies of your minutes, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and you can explain for our, our viewers, I, I found this, the members of the Capital Planning Working Group Mm -hmm. which is different from the Capital Planning Committee. That's true. And what, is the, what are the big differences? The working group is actually uh, town employees that are working under the administration of the town manager, and they collectively put together their needs every year that fold into making up the capital improvement program for submission for that particular So Mike year. Rabel from the DPW would, right. would say, I need this, this, and this, Right. and let's make a plan, and then they submit it to you. And they collectively set their priorities and the town manager uh, through their committee and then they present the program to uh, their recommendations to the capital plan and then we, we do our evaluation. And as I say, sometimes we actually will change priorities. Sometimes we do not agree and, and we're advisory only, so we strictly advise the select board and we, we try to give them a justification statement of why we feel this way. Now, if, if he wants to come and, and said he needs a new um, snowblower, mm -hmm. is that part of, would that funnel its way up to you? And yeah, if it, if it was in the capital improvement program, this year Mike had, uh, I think, four pieces of equipment, and consequently this year we could not recommend three of those for replacement because they're, on an equipment replacement program you have mileage and, and age that go together and also condition, and we felt that the vehicles, that some of them that were being put in could be extended on out. And there were some other things that were submitted that we just felt were, uh, there were needs, but they may not have been a want at this time, or they they were a, they were a want instead of a need. Okay. They were nice improvements, but we could make them down the road when the money was a little more freer. I, I think there was one that said there was a hole in the floor of, of one of the vehicles. That was a very old uh, when Mike first got here, and. And actually, I, it may sound negative, but a lot of times in your snow vehicles, if you don't maintain them very well and, and wash them down, the floorboards will rust out because people get in with salt on their feet. That's I mean, right. it's not yeah. like your mm -hmm. home vehicle. A, a service truck gets in pretty rough duty. Yeah. In our day, we they used to weld some kind of a metal sheet under there. Yeah. Is that legal in this day and age? Yeah, you can, you can put anything sure, to hold the floor together. Sure, you can repair together. it too. And we also brought up this year that, that we felt there was a need for a uh, equipment allocation plan. Now, th this plan actually, it's like you do in your home. You sit down and you, you justify each vehicle on how it's going to be used in your organization and the need for it. And through this evaluation, sometimes you can find out that you've got pieces of equipment that you really should be renting. You should not have full ownership of. And we felt a need for this. We have a large fleet in this community. Mm -hmm. We have several million dollars worth of vehicles when you roll them all together. We have 14 large trucks or 14 trucks well, out there. We have a lot of new snow. vehicles, don't we? We have an awful lot of new equipment. Yeah. Uh, I've, in my analysis, it looks like we have spent almost as much on vehicles in the last five or six years as we've spent on asphalt in this community. Yeah. So we kind of felt maybe it's time for an allocation study. So let's, let's justify these vehicles again. Right. Let's, let's revisit this issue. Does, does outsourcing come into the picture any, any place? We're not making recommendations no. on outsourcing, okay. no. No, that's, that's for the town manager and the select board. How's your feeling on the facility for the DPW? The facility for the DPW is, needs to be replaced. It, uh, it is not a suitable facility for professional maintenance. Yeah. It is, and I think everybody in the community knows that. It's, it's, it's where well would it, Where would it go? Where would it go? Where would it? Well, I'd, I'd bulldoze it down and build it again. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not that you can do anything with that, but you know, there's some major decisions to be made in the future. For sure. Even right. consolidation. Do you start to look at these communities that are so closely bonded together for consolidation purposes? Right. Mm -hmm. I know we hate to talk about that, but these, sometimes these are the realities of, uh, of financial decisions. Sure. Could that be, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Uh, could that be done like piecemeal? You know, on the, you know, real like they're doing here, more or less. 
they're they're knocking something down and then they're going to rebuild and leave some. Could that be done at the DPW like piecemeal? You knock one area or use that one area as you come down Emerson and start building from there. And I don't. Maybe you can't. I you know I'm well, no engineer. You can. Anything can be done. <clears throat> oh. Excuse me on a piecemeal basis. If you have the master plan and identified, and you have the land procured, and you have all the engineering done, you can start to phase construction. Right. You usually go with your administration buildings first and get that settled, then you start with your shops. Yes, it can be done, but it's going to be very expensive, mm -hmm. as we well know. Yeah, and so the key word is must be done in order to... to definitely. If, if now we just yeah. say, let's fix this corner, we're in trouble. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you involved anyway in that uh, uh, the solar farm no. that's going to go on the meadow? No, no I've not that's been involved in none. any of these discussions. They're not doing that anymore. Oh, they're not going to do that? No, it, it wasn't uh, financially feasible. Oh, son of a gun. <laughs> well, I think so. I think Am we I had right? a show on that, that didn't I we? believe that's what I heard. I think yeah. Mark Gold has been was he spearheading He did an excellent that. job, and you yeah. have to give that man credit, because after really looking into it mm -hmm. and finding out we are not going to get the revenue that he anticipated we would, mm -hmm. so he pulled it off. And I, I think that, that he should be commended. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was yes. his idea, and like saying, <clears throat> my idea, and I'm, I'm going to stick with it. He went by the, uh, you know, yeah, for the good of the town. And Mr. Gold is extremely analytical. Yes, he and, is. And you're right, he will back away from the decision exactly. if it's not economically feasible. He, he does an excellent job, just yes. what we need, uh, yes. you know. Now, I, did, I didn't know it was canceled. Yeah, yeah. It's news to us, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I try to watch all these meetings. I love LCTV. Yeah, that was brought up at a select board meeting two or three before her. Right. Two right. or three meetings. How that. many expenditures are normally turned down, or what percentage? You just talked about three out of four pieces of equipment for the DPW were turned down. Right. Um, approximately. There's no, there's no approximate average we can there give isn't. you because the, the master plan, we have a master plan that has five years worth of projects. And while we're doing a committee review, we may actually look out at next year, a project in next year and bring it back to this year so that we will take an active one that was submitted by the town manager and we will recommend that this be pushed down a couple of years and we may feel it can be put down. And sometimes you do that for economics. Mm -hmm. That it's sometimes your staging and your uh, mobilization on contracts. So we put phases of stuff together to try mm -hmm. to do them. But it, it moves back and forth. I wish I could give you a set factor, but there's no, there's no there set factor, it. no. Other than we can't get more money allocated than is given to the committee. Our if, recommendation. If you're only going to receive six hundred fifty thousand, and your goal was a million, whatever it was, one, one, you, one, one point, point two one. or one point yeah, one, 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 how are you going to make <clears> up the shortfall? How is that made up? We're not going to make. You're it not going to do it. No. It, the, the only way that whatever you get, you get. Whatever we get, we get, and we're kicking the can down the road. And say with our road system, it, it is continuing. We're not spending what we need to be on the road system today, and this was brought so it's up. It's going to come back and bite us in the future. It was brought up very strongly in the report that was given to the town, and eventually you will be talking about major bond issues. That has to be. I mean, there's no other way right. to get the money, and we know that. So in other words, it, like your house, if something is not doing too well, you should repair it immediately before it becomes a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. It's common sense. You know? and, and our communities, like a lot of communities in America, we're faced with the same problem. Our, our infrastructure needs are, outweighed, are outpacing yes. our economic means. Right. So they have to, we have to really look for really uh, good managers now to, to say, yes. how do we get around this? Right, right. Yeah. Is, is the should it be, uh, like you mentioned before, instead of a five-year plan, should we be doing, as you say, a 10 or a 15 or a 20? Has any thought been given into extending you know, your vision past this the five-year? Everybody has a five-year plan. That has been our recommendations, very strong recommendations to the board and anyone that I have an opportunity to talk about facility management. Five-year plan in facility management is more of an implementation plan instead of a vision plan. Right. Now we have a we have a vision for this community, and there was a long range planning or long range uh, development done. I think back in 2000, and there's a lot of elements there in that plan that need to be brought forward also. But if you can't get into a 15 to 20 year plan, you're never going to see the true needs of this community. It cannot be shown in a five year plan because some of these elements are only replaced every 30 to 40 years. Right. Right. Uh, you could even go a 50 year spreadsheet and look at stuff way on out. When you replace a water main today, you can say, okay, I'm going to replace this 50 years. Run on out in the data in a spreadsheet and put it 50 years from now. This need is coming back. 
and you also put in the formulation whatever your uh, anticipated inflationary rate is. So it's rolling each year. And unless you're doing this, you're you're kind of fooling. You're playing voodoo economics, right? Right. Because there is the, there's an escalator that's taking place behind the scenes. Now, when you put your warrants uh, before the uh, select board and they put them on the on the uh, agenda, mm -hmm. yeah. Do, do you um, do you have feel that they're putting them on uh, the way you would want them as priorities, or that they cut it down another? Is there another cut? Before, you know, from you to them to the, to the. I, uh, I don't think the priorities change that much because once it hits a warrant issue, it's either on there or it's not on there. There's not much prioritization done on those. Uh, this year, as I say, the the select board has uh, taken a lot of the projects and and uh, delayed them for more research until the fall meeting. So they did not take all of our recommendations because we made some pretty strong recommendations. We, for instance, we were asking that they set aside $250,000 every year from now almost to, to eternity for design work on road systems to get us ready for the transportation improvement program. We have about six or seven arteries in the community that may or may not be able to get federal money to right. redo them. But we have to do the engineering and the research on them in order to submit the projects to the transportation program. Right. So we were recommending, let's start now and start doing this. Let's identify where, where we're going in the five or seven year project and start to get the money up front. But these are hard decisions. Now do you, do you also apply for the federal and state funds? Are there we do not. No, not on the committee. No. 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 Who does that? The town manager town and, manager the, and does that? director of public works would have to be the ones going mm -hmm. after these funds. Okay. Do you have knowledge about what uh, grants are available? Uh, well, not so much in Massachusetts, but generally speaking, I have knowledge on the ones that I used when I was dealing right. in it, and it was federal highways money. That was, oh, yeah. it was always very nice money to get, but you had mm -hmm. to meet, you had to jump through all the hoops, right. and you had to do pre-design work up front. So there is an, invest, an investment to get ready for it. Mm -hmm. But I might add, that investment is not a waste of money because the same research in, for uh, specification development that you would use for put in for a transportation improvement project is exactly the same that you'll need to do a contract on that road system. So right. you're not wasting money, you're just kind of putting it up front and doing the planning. And that's just the way that program works. Well, I had, I had one comment or a couple of comments. The, the DPW uh, uh, last year did the roads, they put like tar every, mm -hmm. in, and he says, it's, it's terrible running down the, or driving down the street now because you have thump, 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 yeah, thump, yeah. thump all the way yeah. down the street. Musical streets. Yeah. In, in, in total defense of Mike, and I've talked to Mike a lot, oh. If, if Mike does not have the money, he's, he's trying to keep the road system together. And I, and I even wrote some correspondence that if you do too much crack sealing, it almost becomes road glue. Yes. And yeah. it's not intended. Asphalt will crack. And as soon as it starts to open up from age or drying, you put that sealant down and it keeps the water out of the sub base. That's a good maintenance procedure. But when you get uh, alligator cracking, which is the small scallop, right. your road has already failed at that point. Yeah. We, so you can try to seal it as much as you can, but it's you're, you're dealing with a failed yeah. road system. If we could get Converse Street as a state road, we'd be all set, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, we get, yes. the more the more federal funding, exactly. state funding you can get. Uh, and also, it was interesting. I looked in the paper and I forgot to write the stats down, but it, it looked like the equations for how they gave funds this year, like we may be hurting a little bit because it seemed to be there was some type of employment factor that they had in there mm -hmm. and uh, I did I, I failed to, to really d uh, dissolve the article properly because if we don't have manufacturing centers in this community and if there's if their formula is taking that into uh, consideration then we're never going to be able to get the, the large dollars yeah. because of the, the road system but it's an odd battle because we, we are a bedroom community of Springfield yes right. mm -hmm. and, and New Haven yeah, yeah. And New Haven now yeah. my my uneducated uh, opinion is that uh, Converse doesn't have enough lights on it to slow these trucks down, especially at Burbank and Converse, where it's, you're trying to get out into the flow of traffic mm -hmm, and yeah. you just can't, you right. know, you're stuck there for 10 minutes. Right. I right. mean, throw a light up there to, to help us, you know. There are some transportation improvements that could be made with studies. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see more curb and gutter. Yeah. Concrete curb and gutter in the town to, to control the water and the drainage and, yeah. I know and just say certain. Yeah, I noticed he's putting, uh, DPW is putting new sewers all along uh, Frank Smith, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's his project. 
So well, Street too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll look for your uh, your warrants when we come to the town meeting, which is May tenth. May tenth is the town meeting, so you can come and watch uh, uh, Richard's uh, warrants come before the select board, and uh, well, come before the, the town. Yeah, come before the town and vote for that. Yes. Um, any other questions before we uh, start to wrap this up? No, the warrant is in today's reminder. This week, I try to reminder. bring it up on the website, on the town website, and I couldn't find the warrants. This was maybe three weeks ago. Really? I no, I, s I didn't look at them the other day, but it was an indication that they were there. Oh, maybe that's new because yeah. I try to get them for this. Uh, it might have been um, I couldn't like find on them. the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, in there. Okay. Reminder today. I might I might add one thing. I quite often when I get to talk about facility management, I doom and gloom on what would be ideal. And, and I must add that, uh, you know, Mike and his guys uh, shop down there, they're doing a great job for the funds that are available in the right. community. Yes. Oh, I, no, I, I, I congratulate them on this snow. We had the schools open in this yes. oh, yes. one day after two foot snow. Yeah. And yeah. except for the potholes and some of the other stuff. But you can't help that. Yeah. But we need more planning. We need more money. Right. I, I, I love Mike's uh, leadership. I'm, one of, I'm on one of his committees. He's mm -hmm. my chairperson and so on. So we're going to wrap up now, and um, I wish to thank the, uh, the panel, Jim and Ellie and uh, Winnie, and uh, my name's Jim Jones, which I forgot to mention at the beginning, and uh, unfortunately this is my last uh, uh, program that I'll be hosting here, so hopefully we'll get a new uh, chairperson or moderator to carry on. So we want to thank uh, Mr. Forster for coming today and trying to en en enlighten us as to what the Capital, Capital Planning Committee does. Not the planning committee, but the capital planning committee. So we we'll hope to all see you at the town meeting on May 10th and the town elections on June 7th. 7th. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>